let's talk uh, about delivering offline data to the SGTM container and using it for server-side tracking. Uh, with, the, with the data from WebGTM, it's uh, pretty simple to deliver data to SGTM. You just need to use is either uh, Google Analytics 4 client or Data Tech and Data Client. With the uh, offline data, it's a little bit tricky. Uh, the key part lays in uh, like a way on how you send data to SGTM. The most straightforward way and I think the easiest way is to use webhooks. Uh, all standard uh, CRM, CMS platforms, they have either built-in functionality or some plugins that allow you to send uh, webhooks to uh, a certain URL. So the process of sending uh, offline data is uh, uh, like you create your SGTM container, create a tagging server URL for that, uh, configure a webhook inside your CRM or CMS or any other platform that sends data to your uh, SGTM container, basically your tagging server URL for the SGTM container. Um, then inside the SGTM container, you need to retrieve data that webhook sent. Uh, we will use data client for that. And the last part is to debug uh, webhook data, offline data inside the SGTM. Uh, to do so, we will use step power up. So let's start uh, with the implementation. Uh, I will use a step up for WordPress. This app allows to send uh, purchase and uh, refund webhooks. So um, we have the same apps for uh, for now for Shopify, Magento, and WordPress. But currently, I'm working on more apps for different CMS. So yeah, we will cover I think two or three more additional CMS in future. Uh, what you need to do is enable the checkbox uh, send webhooks then past your tagging server URL so in my case it's uh, sgtm video and then uh, to differentiate like this type of uh, webhooks from other requests uh, I added a specific path so uh, in this case it's uh, slash webhook uh, then I need to select what type of webhooks I want to send. Uh, so let's uh, let's send both and purchase and refund it. Uh, just click save. Um, so this process is pretty simple. And now we need to test if webhooks were sent correctly to the SGTM container. Uh, but here the problem is that by default uh, it's impossible to see uh, webhook data inside the SGTM. Uh, but there is a one uh, specific way on how you can do that with the help of state power up. So what you need to do is launch the preview of SGTM. Um, then click here uh, send request manually and copy this uh, uh, preview header. Open your state account and uh, scroll to SGTM preview header config. Uh, what this power-up does, uh, it uh, sends all uh, requests to your uh, tagging server URL uh, to the debugger as well. So uh, please ensure that you do not use this power-up on the production uh, because uh, it, it can slow down the performance of your uh, tagging server in case you send all production traffic to the SGTM preview. Okay, now let's test if uh, uh, webhooks are sent correctly to our SGTM container. Uh, I will click uh, send the test webhooks and let's go to uh, the preview mode. Uh, yeah, so you can see that uh, I, I received the two requests. Um, so, um, like, uh, these are two re incoming requests uh, that goes to my tagging server URL slash webhook. And uh, these are like two requests uh, that one of them sends refund information to SGTM and the second one sends purchase information in SGTM. So uh, this one works correctly. Um, 
Now uh, let's configure a client that will claim the request because uh, like by default uh, this uh, request uh, will not be claimed by any client. Uh, you need to add the configuration for that. Uh, I recommend using data client uh, by Stape to, uh, to retrieve data from the webhooks. Um, you can find the data client template uh, on Stape GitHub. Unfortunately, Google does not accept uh, uh, client templates in their template gallery, so you would need to manually add it uh, by downloading it from GitHub and upload into your SGTM container templates. So I already have it here. Basically, if you uh, want to add a new client template, you just click new and then click import and select uh, file that you downloaded from the GitHub. Once you added this client template to your SGTM, create a new client and uh, select the client name uh, data client. So I already have it here. Once you've uh, added a data client, you need to add some additional configuration and uh, you should click accepted path settings and then include uh, which path of the request that you want the data client to claim. Uh, since I'm sending my webhooks to slash webhook, uh, I've added slash webhook as a, a path that the data client should claim. Uh, let's uh, refresh the preview. And uh, let me send again the test uh, webhooks. Yeah, so, uh, for example, let's see the purchase webhook. So uh, we can see that uh, there was an incoming request uh, to slash webhook. And this incoming request was claimed by data client. So it means that uh, data client process all the data that that webhook uh, contains. And uh, this data was retrieved to the event data. Um, so... Uh, if you see that client claim the request, just go to event data and here you can see like a better structured format on um, how uh, SGTM process webhook data. Um, after you're done with uh, setting up and uh, testing webhooks and uh, like sending any offline data to SGTM, ensure that you go to the um, Stape account and uh, disable SGTM preview header config power up. Uh, we automatically disable uh, this power up for you uh, in 40 minutes after it was enabled. So we want to prevent the error when uh, um, our client uh, uses this power up to configure webhooks but then forgets to disable it and uh, all production traffic goes to, uh, to the preview. Um, that's it. Uh, thank you for watching.